safety features are the same as a conventional school bus. It's painted the same color, chrome yellow. It has the crossing gate at the front and it has the child check to make sure that there's no sleeping students. It also has wider aisles so that it's easier access to all the seats and all seats are three-point harness available uh, ready for all new seatbelts if the law changes for seatbelts and school buses. Yes, it does. 72 passengers, primary school children that will about 75 pounds each. Hopefully that won't happen. We uh, keep it on a special route for that reason. But there are other charging stations available. We would tow the bus back to charge it at our base. It does have on-the-fly recharging. Uh, the, it has regenerative braking. So if you're actually going down a hill, it will boost the kilometers and the total distance driven. And the more you drive it, obviously, the more it can boost the power, but it's only minimal, 20 kilometers or so. Uh, yes, we had to install the level two base charger. So there's three levels of, of charging stations. And first level is a slow charge, and it takes about eight hours to be a full charge. Second level is what we purchased, which is about four hours to full charge. And then there's a quick charger level three, which only takes one to one and a half hours. Uh, being that it's fully electric, uh, we don't have to change the oil at all. Um, there is a diesel fired heater because we're in Canada. So there is maintenance on the diesel fired heater, but it's, it's minimal as well. With the regenerative braking, it actually slows the vehicle down when you're coming down a hill. So the brakes should actually last three times longer than a conventional school bus. Uh, depending on weather conditions in the winter, we just we expect to save seven to eight thousand dollars per year compared to a conventional school bus. And there is a little bit of diesel for the diesel fired heater, but it is very good on fuel. It's very friendly to work on. It's the dashboard works well, and the the body is a lot lighter, and it, it's held together pretty good in the Canadian weather. So there is five battery packs that are all joined together and they're made from lithium ion cells and there's hundreds and hundreds of little cells in each battery pack and it uh, the lithium ion is the same as in a cell phone or in an ipad and it's very dependable technology the battery charging station there is a port in the front of the vehicle you just pop the grill open and you can pull the cord from the base charger and clip it into the grill inside the grill when the light turns green, then it's charging. Currently, we charge the batteries between runs and overnight. Um, we usually try to make sure it has at least a two to three hour charge before it goes on a school run. The bus starts off at 100% is 131 kilometers, and then with regenerative braking, it can go up to 150 kilometers. Fossil fuel bus on the highway can go almost 600 kilometers, so the fossil fuel bus can go a lot further, but it costs a lot more money to run as well. Batteries are located in a main battery box behind the rear wheels underneath the floor. It's very slow charge, so if we that possible, we would charge, tow the bus back so we can charge it at the base station. Yes, under 30 kilometers an hour, it, it makes, uh, there's a sound generator that makes noise, and it almost sounds like an ice cream truck driving down the road. The whole body structure itself only weighs 1,000 pounds. A typical conventional school bus can weigh up to 10,000 pounds with all the metal. So being that the body structure is just made out of polycarbonate, it's only 1,000 pounds. Uh, so the, the dashboard, it's very similar to a, a regular dashboard that you would see. Uh, the shift, the transmission is push button, has a backup beeper just like every other school bus. All the other controls are, are fairly similar and they're pretty much the same layout as a regular conventional school bus. Uh, we have our gauges, which is our heater temperature and our electric motor temperature. We also have our battery charge on a manual gauge plus the electric gauge over here. So the iPad, this, this will give you all the features of the bus and it's right now it's just showing your, your power and your distance and we can change the, there's a coolant pump to pump for pumping the heat through the vehicle. We can check the, the power output of the vehicle while we're driving, the charging state, so when the vehicle's charging. This also tells you the RPM and how the, in, the electric motor's working. There's only one single electric motor on the vehicle and it's located close to the back of the bus. It also has uh, two 12 volt batteries for your 12 volt accessories. So you can plug in your cell phone or other things, AM, FM radio. So that is uh, the main batteries the batteries run on approximately 400 volts 
and all the cables are orange to let you know that it's high voltage. This just gives you the general stats of, of everything that it monitors. The technicians would use this when they're talking with Lion to diagnose different items on the vehicle. Lion has been very good with us um, on the warranty side of it and on all the support. They've uh, got back to us within 24 hours for all repairs needed and it's, it's been a very good experience. I'd do it again.